Hey guys, Scare9 here. Welcome back to my channel today. And with the completion of the Prophecy Dungeon Solo Flawless Challenge yesterday, I want to go ahead and break down a guide for you guys. What I personally use and what I think everyone else should use or how you should approach the different encounters and that sort of thing. Now, I will say this is very important. You're not going to be able to get this done just if you're, you know, just following this word for word. If you are not comfortable with what I am personally using, of course, you have to use the character you're best with or the weapons that you're best with and that sort of thing. This is just what worked for me. And I think this is a pretty meta way of completing it. So I'm going to break down each of the separate encounters, what you should use for each encounter, the strategies you should, uh, you know, kind of utilize for each encounter. I'm going to have the timestamps on screen right now, as well as when I'm done talking about an encounter, I'm going to let the footage play out of my entire run, but I'm also going to put a timestamp to the next encounter. So if you just want to listen to what I have to say and skip to the next encounter, that's fine. But if you want to watch it and see exactly what I did, uh, I would highly recommend that as well, just depending on your uh, amount of uh, comfortableness with this dungeon and that sort of thing. This is not meant to be an explanation of how this dungeon works. Go into this video, assuming you already know how to do the dungeon, uh, cause that's gonna, that's how I'm treating it. So I would recommend doing this on bottom tree or devour tree warlock with definitely a healing rift. I use vortex nades. Uh, this is probably the most survivable class in the game, just barely more than well. Uh, but I definitely think for these sorts of solo challenges, this is the type of character you want. Um, these are the weapons I pretty much used for the entire thing. Mountaintop, Recluse, uh, and Anarchy. With the exception of the first encounter, I actually used this Falling Guillotine with uh, Relentless Strikes and Whirlwind Blade. Uh, because this thing's pretty cracked and the first boss can just knock you off of ledges. So it's really nice to have a sword to stop you from falling off. Um, then my armor, pretty much, you know, whatever you want, but there's a couple of mods that you definitely want. So I was playing into my grenade launchers because I'm using mountaintop and anarchy. And it's really important to always have uh, ammo. You're definitely going to want some resist mods. The yellow knights can absolutely destroy you. And there's some uh, minor snipers as well throughout the dungeon that are pretty deadly. So you're going to want to stack different resist mods. Uh, and then I'm having taking charge because uh, for a sort of damage build that I'm using. So taking charge, uh, become charged with light by picking up orbs of light. I have all masterworked weapons, so I'm going to be dropping them fairly frequently. I have a boss resist here, uh, reload for my grenade launcher. I probably could have stacked something else. I don't know what, but maybe I could have used something else, but I didn't. Taken Barrier. Receiving Taken Damage gives a 20% reduction in damage for 10 seconds. 100%, you're gonna wanna have that. If you don't have it, go open up the weekly chests in Last Wish. You can get every one of them solo on every character as far as I'm aware. Um, so definitely you're gonna wanna go farm those mods out. And then uh, on this one, I'm having taken armaments, uh, increased reserves, a minor resist, like I mentioned before. I use the transverse of steps. A lot of people were saying to use Meserax instead. This is what I prefer. I like going fast. It was very nice because if it's in a sticky situation, I could run over ammo, have my mountaintop reloaded and that sort of thing. Um, so it was, this is just what I recommend. I think that is going to be uh, kind of a, a huge, increase to um most people's strategy and then uh, i'm using high energy fire so this is why i was using taking charge when i'm charged with light you gain bonus weapon damage each defeated combatant consumes one stack of charged uh charged with light so i was using this right before i went into the final boss i would run over an orb i'd make sure i have charged with light on so i'm doing more damage against the boss i think it's just, that kind of helped me secure a three phase but uh four phases it's probably going to be the average um and then i was using oppressive darkness as well because that's pretty one of the most powerful mods in the game uh, i would recommend being at least 1055 but 1060 uh is probably a lot better because you're on light with the last boss and other than that that's pretty much the character setup you can definitely do this uh with a bubble titan or one of the invis hunter trees i just think that it's best to do it on warlock so that's why i did it there so let's go ahead and break down each of the separate encounters so we can talk about why i did what and where so this is actual footage from my stream and i think it's really important to see how this sort of stuff looks in real time right so um 
I would give you a couple tips. I'm gonna go ahead and say stay calm always. I feel like in my previous dungeon runs with Shattering Throne and Pit of Heresy, going solo flawless for those, that's what'll screw you over the most, is being nervous. I know if you haven't done a lot of challenges like this, it can be very easy to get overwhelmed and be very anxious, but uh, just stay as calm as possible. Now here I'm using the first encounter skip just for the hallway. Uh, if you can do the rest of the dungeon, you can obviously do the hallway. And if you're failing over and over and over again, having to do this really monotonous kind of short, annoying encounter, uh, is gonna be very demoralizing. So um, I kind of failed the jump there because I had the wrong subclass on. But what you're gonna wanna do uh, for Hunter, you can do it with Stompies, I believe. I think it's pretty free. You can just jump up there, swipe with the sword, jump with Stompies. With Titan, uh, you can do it with Lion Rampits, but with Warlock, you have to have Top Tree on as far as I'm aware. Um, so you swing your sword all the way up there. You Phoenix Dive or Icarus Dash, excuse me, uh, to get up around the thing. Like I said, I don't think this is a problem. It is an exploit for all intents and purposes, but this encounter isn't hard. There's no way you're wiping in this first encounter. Um, and so I don't really see using the skip glitch as a problem if it's saving you time, uh, especially with it's something, uh, you know, as trivial as this. So uh, once you jump up there, you can go straight to the first encounter. Like I mentioned, I am using sword for this and a well. You can very easily one phase the boss using this combination of weapons and subclasses. Um, it's pretty easy. It's self-explanatory this encounter. I will say this is probably where the majority of your deaths are going to come from. This is a very tight boss room. The boss can just push you off the edges. The knights are kind of like really annoying. Uh, take care of the scions first so they don't rapidly uh, multiply out of control. And uh, I would say take your time. If you have to lose your moats so you stay alive, do it. Survivability is going to be the most important thing for these encounters, especially if you're going for solo flawless, obviously. And so just make sure you are taking your time. You're approaching this very systematically. And uh, yeah, I'll let the rest of the uh, footage play out for this encounter. I'll come back, visit you guys, and uh, explain the next encounter when we get there. Uh, but uh, if you want to skip to that, here's the timestamp for that. But I would recommend watching the entire thing flawless this yet so i'm just, i really want to figure it out on my own i think uh, that makes you a better player is when you have to figure out oh my fucking christ when you have to figure out some of these strategies on your own and so i, I you know i was asking for general advice from my friends like gogo -Go, who have done it but um for the most part i really want to i want to try to explore this a little bit and uh come up with some of my own Tactics. Oh, dude, you're a prick. Probably shouldn't do this. That was a really stupid move. Oh, what? Oh, my moats must have expired. Damn. Okay. I didn't think about that. There we go. I don't think I got it. Oh, I did get it. Ooh, that was close. Oh. Uh, you still and gigs have done full flaw solo floss? I think like a couple hundred people have now. I know at least seven people in rough have done it. Um, couple in Dabao have done it that I know of. I, it, this isn't a rare challenge at this point, right? Like it's it's been done quite a few times, uh, but I, I still wanna, I mean, obviously I want it for the triumph score. And uh, like I said, I want to I want to try to figure it out myself a little bit. All on the on my quest to become a better, better player. Oh, that's not fucking good. I want to be careful that I don't swing off the edge when I kill him. Go. You buy the prophecy jumper? I don't know what that is. Oh, sorry. The the hoodie? No, I don't think I'm gonna. Triumph score even get you, dude. That mad clout. Oh, what? All right, take it slow. Take it slow.
Well, that's not good. Oh, he's gonna be dark. What'd he drop? Oh, he did drop white. Fuck yeah. Oh, it didn't let me pop it. Shit. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I tried to pop it immediately. Oh, what? Where'd my... Oh, you lose it if you pop them well? Damn, dude. Oh, more moats on the boss. That's fine. I'm probably about to get rushed. So there is a delay before you can pop it. So keep that in mind if you're going for this. You can't pick it up and pop it immediately. Oh my god. I would really like a break here, boss. Please. There we go. Is this three or four? Is this damage? No, one more. I was trying to swing past and I made a very bad mistake there. Really glad it didn't cost me. Well, I guess I, that doesn't really matter at all, does it? Okay. Probably should have saved that rift, but you know, what can you do? Okay. Three peaking and PVE LMAO toxic. Dude, I want to make sure I was getting rushed. Hey, Bungie doesn't put a no sweaty try hard exclusion on this, right? Solo flawless this, use whatever you have to to get it done. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna die. He's clap. He's clap, he's clap, he's clap. Oh, don't suck me in yet. Oh, damn. Actually so the next encounter is going to be the Wasteland encounter. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Honestly, this is a fairly free encounter. Um, you just kind of have to take your time, kill things. Uh, as you can see, mountaintop can be kind of difficult to aim on these guys because they move so damn much. But uh, I would say make sure you're taking out these giant minotaurs first. They can be very, very deadly. Then as you move to an area, prioritize the snipers because they will kill you faster than pretty much anything else in this area. Um, then take out the little thrall guys and then focus on like the captains or the centurions or uh, I think you can actually get snipers as well depending on which area you are at but honestly wasteland not much to say here uh, for the blights you can stick one anarchy on them and finish them off with the recluse one anarchy might even be able to kill them depending I'm not really sure um, but it's a very powerful strategy that I would recommend so I'm gonna let this gameplay play out and come back at in my opinion the most terrifying encounter the cube room so I will be back in one second so this room is in my opinion the scariest one there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong in this room i wouldn't say it's necessarily the most difficult but if you do not play it exactly correct uh you're, you might screw yourself over pretty quickly so prioritize the snipers there are two to three in every room and they respawn about every minute or so maybe every 30 seconds just listen out for the take and respawn noise they make a very specific noise um you need to kill them first or else they will melt you 
You need to make sure that you're in a corner of the room that the knights and acolytes do not spawn in. Uh, usually they occupy about half of the room and the other half is semi-safe with a little bit of cover, so I'd prioritize that. Um, but other than that, I'm still using Anarchy Top with Recluse, pretty free strategy. If you are a Devour, make sure you always have Devour proc. As you can see here, I don't have a proc. Um, that's kind of a mistake. You need to always try to have Devour up. I would save your Healing Rift for extreme situations. And if you're about to die, just use your Nova Bomb, get a kill, reproc your Devour, or, you know, refill your Devour, get your health back. Um... If you're Titan, I don't really know how you're going to survive this room, to be honest. Like, just moving around a lot, uh, hoping that you don't get shot too much. But Titans don't really have uh, many panic survivability options. Whereas if you're an invis hunter, you can just go invisible, hopefully survive the encounter. But this is why I like Devour uh, Warlock. Like, this room specifically here uh, shows the strengths that that subclass has uh, because it's pretty freaking hard to die. And as you can see here, I, I clearly recognize there's a sniper above me. Uh, I pop that Devour. I'm looking for it. Um, and you just need to get it. You need to get it as quickly as possible because if they are up, you are not safe. And that is really important to know. So make sure you take them. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to let the rest of the footage play out and come back during the Rainbow Road encounter. Oh, it's going to turn dark. Fuck. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to re get modes. That's fine, that's fine. No rush, no rush. No rush. Let me make sure there's not any more snipers anywhere. That guy's weak. Any snipers? Any snipers? I think I just saw one spawn. Nope. Sorry, just looking for snipers real quick. I don't want to run out in the center unless I know I'm safe. Fuck. Okay, now we're good. Let me clear ads and I'll kill all the knights. Oh, for... Mm. Oh, sniper, sniper. Oh, dude. Uh, light. Talk about no cover, dude. Okay. Six. There's one more, and I don't know where. Probably above me. Maybe there isn't one more, okay. So I need the light again. Oh. Oh no, 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 no. That's not at all what I meant to do. Oh! 
If I didn't have Devour there, I would have killed myself. Shit. I need to play this more intelligently, dude. Come on! Why does it have to spawn stuff in the only cover, dude? Oh, I'm so fucked. I'm so fucked. I'm so fucked. There's no cover. There's absolutely no cover. Need to take care of this prick, dude. Die, yes. Thank fuck. Okay, are we good? All right, where do I need to go? What? Am I high? Tollwind just doesn't exist. Oh, I never picked him up. I think those are gonna be light. Dude, that sucks. That little sliver of light screwed me over. That's fine, that's fine. Just fucking hit him, thank you. What? Why is he? I'm glad the snipers disappeared, dude. to actually get toll in this time <laughs> oh this is not a fun room oh no
That's him, right? White. This is an awful fucking room. They're all awful rooms. Oh, I can't believe I hit that. Oh, nice. Oh, that's not good. I said I needed dark, right? Dark, yes. Damn, brother. All right, so here we are in the singularity or better named Rainbow Road encounter. This thing is terrifying. If you make one misstep, if you're on your sparrow for a second too long, if you suck at jumping, look, I almost failed it right there on the first jump because I was so nervous. You need to be very careful here. Do not let the anxiety get the best of you. Uh, you just need to make sure that you are doing your best. Now, here you can see I pulled out a whisper. Don't do that. That was a stupid move. Um, I was trying it out. I was hoping that it would one-shot the snipers and I can move on because there are a lot of snipers peppered throughout this thing. You'll see me take out a couple as we go through. Just use mountaintop. Uh, as long as they don't know you're there, they won't move. You can easily snipe them with mountaintop. Whisper is a two-shot kill. Um, 
and it just wasn't worth the chance see as you can see it doesn't even one shot body shot uh i tried to infuse it here it doesn't even matter uh just just stick with mountain top that's probably going to be your best bet now i'm going to say for most of this doing the ribbon strategy just walking down the ribbon i would not even sparrow especially if you're on warlock because you can't save yourself um i would say just walking down the ribbon is going to be your best bet uh but there is a part where the ribbon kind of does like a twirly thing uh and at that point you have to take like actual platforms that vandals and phalanxes spawn on uh, you're going to want to take that as slowly as possible and you're going to want to prioritize taking out the snipers not being on the same platform as the phalanx and then taking out the phalanx as quickly as possible because you will get melted uh very 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 quickly so um yeah that is what i would recommend for this encounter take your time watch the path that i take if you've got a better one you know go and take that if you're more comfortable with it uh, but in my opinion, the path I took was probably the best one. You just need to be very careful. Take your time. This is going to take a while, but you don't want to waste 30 minutes of your solo run or whatever because you make a stupid mistake and fall off the ribbon here. So be very careful. Um, watch the rest of the footage, and I'll see you back for the final boss room. See you guys in a second. I don't know where I want to go for this next one. So, I think technically, if you go up through this cube and you take the top route, the floaty route, it's easier. But, but taking Scion or Phalanx, you spawn there and there. Whereas I could take a slightly harder jump. Oh, fuck. Take a slightly harder jump. Take a slightly harder jump and, and not have to deal with any of those guys. Dude, I always get so nervous with jumps. I like, I know how to do jumps, obviously. But if just freaking jumps scare the hell out of me i think i'm gonna go i think i'm gonna go top route that's just so dangerous dude that's so dangerous and here i can just pop a devour clear out some nerds have a good time Oh, I should have... Oh, okay, okay. Now I'm really nervous because I, I meant to pop a taken armor mitts. So found spawns there and there. <laughs> that wasn't really an issue now was it
Holy fuck. All right, boy, back on the plate again, brother. No way in hell I'm taking this way down. Oh, shit. I almost should. I almost should. I guess I don't really need to take an armor mitts on because I'll just fucking I have already a flag right ahead of me. Alright, so here we are in the final boss room. When you're here, you're probably gonna be very anxious. You just, once again, need to calm down. Once again, I'm using Anarchy Top. That's gonna be your best damage combination for the boss. And then Recluse is gonna be the best for ad clearing, in my opinion. Although Mountaintop's pretty damn good at that too. Now, once again, you're gonna wanna make sure you have Devour proc at all times. There are like 500 times I would have died in this encounter had I not had Devour. Um, your first priority should be safely, but very quickly clearing out one of the three sides. That is the most intense part of this encounter. If you do not clear one of the sides, uh, you know, you're getting shot from all three sides. It's pretty freaking brutal. But as soon as you clear one of those giant guys, you kill the ogre, then you are good to go. And you pretty much have that room uh, in the bags, in my opinion. At least. So 
just make sure you're taking your time, uh, but you are prioritizing getting that done. I believe a single Anarchy shot will kill a Knight, but if you want him killed even quicker, stick him with two, hit him with the mountaintop. You have taken armaments, so... Um, it's not really that big of a deal if you use an extra shot. As you see there, I missed the cleanse. Make sure, you know, you're taking your time. If you get anxious and you miss your cleanse because you try something stupid or you just make a mistake, you can recover, but that does significantly increase your chances of dying. So make sure you're getting it right on your first time. Um, obviously it worked out for me, uh, but there were a lot of times here where I almost died and you just need to be very careful and you need to be cognizant and not panic. So kill the knights, clear out the sides, kill the ogres. If you leave the ogres for too long and you run around on the other side of their room, they will teleport to you. You'll see that later in the footage. Keep that in mind, please, because I don't want a run to be ended uh, because of a weird game mechanic. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but it seems very intentional because it happens every single time with the ogres. Um, they will teleport to you and they will try to kill you. Luckily, I don't think their beam pushes you back, or at least I didn't notice it. Uh, they're pretty easy to take out. Just, you know, anarchy should take them out if you want them dead faster just mount top and then do the thing so i'm gonna let this phase play out i'm gonna come back at the boss room because i think that's a, a whole different strategy that we should discuss uh and then after that i'm gonna let the whole footage play out so i'll see you guys in a second Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> Did I kill the... Is the ogre still up? Oh, did I miss again? Oh, that's not good. All right, I'm gonna kill things for my super. So you load into the boss room. First thing you should do, pop two anarchies on them immediately. All of your DPS essentially is gonna be coming from uh, anarchy at least 80%. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to hit them with mountain tops. I always go to this front left platform. I think it's the easiest to dodge. Um, so you just need to make sure you're reapplying anarchy. Don't get teleported like I did there. If you do, it is plenty recoverable, uh, but it's just a dumb mistake that shouldn't happen. Prioritize snipers. Anytime you see snipers up, you need to kill them first. Um, that's why Anarchy is so important because it's constantly doing DPS even if you are not paying attention to the boss. Reapply Anarchy. I usually go forward a platform here. Make sure you're bobbing and weaving and you need to be watching your dark entropy the entire time so he doesn't kill you. So I usually stand right here. When he teleports, I'll go to the front right platform. Uh, that platform is very handy because you can actually hit him in his next two spots from there. So that's pretty cool. Um, make sure you're reapplying Anarchy whenever you're not focusing on him. You need to make sure he's constantly having DPS done to him. So it's spawn right here in front of you. He has the same spawn patterns every time. So you can kind of do a predictive oppressive darkness Nova bomb or whatever there. Uh, that'll chunk a large portion of his health. Just make sure uh, you are reapplying anarchy, hitting him with mountaintop whenever you can, but focusing snipers. 
uh, as well. Um, Anarchy is not a big deal. Use as much ammo as you can because you have taken armaments. It's pretty easy to get more. And the with if you have like the um, grenade launcher, armor drops, and scavenger, uh, you just get insane amounts from the regular enemies as well. So um, that is really hard. So here uh, we get them down to about a third of the damage. This next part I'm gonna edit out, but after the boss leaves, I wait like three minutes to get my super back for the next room. Um, make sure you do that. I'm pretty sure I would have died if I didn't have my super in this room. So I think that's really important to do. There's no shame in waiting, but I'm gonna edit it out. And then uh, I'm just gonna let the rest of the, the guide play. So hopefully you found this guide useful. If you didn't, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe for future videos uh, and live streams. I hope you guys have a lot of luck doing this. Um, yeah, if you have any tips of your own, leave them down in the comment section below. Enjoy the rest of the guide, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I don't know what I need. I do need one darkness, so... Darkness, dark, two darkness and the lights. Please get it, thank you. I don't have devour, I'm kinda... Just need to play it safe for a second. Don't have devour. Oh wait, I can get devour from melee. Dude, I'm a bot. That's like... Oh, for fuck's sake, come on. Oh, for fuck's sake, are you kidding me? It's fine. Get my devour back. Kill him. Proc my devour again. No, 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 Okay, well, that's not at all what I wanted to do, but that's fine.
not a mountaintop. That's not fucking good. He's gonna teleport. Got these ogres teleport. No?
fucking what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> to fucking pass out. <laughs> that was like my first real attempt, right? Like I, I died at the first boss once. That was my second try. Oh my God. <laughs> 